Proviron. Is it gonna make a comeback? I thought the other day when I was working on the app with a great guy named Frank over there in Europe, this is for you, Frank, talking about Proviron, because he said he's a man, he's natty, he wants to go on TRT, he wants to do TRT, but he doesn't want the shutdown. He doesn't want to be committed, I think he said. He doesn't want to, not ready for TRT. So he tried some, and clomiphene. He tried clomid, and he's gonna try and clomiphene, you see, putting his foot in the water. And then he came up with Proviron, and I know that there's a book on Proviron, there's a doctor that's done a lot of things on this, and it's from a long time ago, and I wanna talk about this today. I haven't read that book yet, because I'm just so busy, but I want to get this done, because I did some research on this, and I need some anecdotes from you guys, so. Can Proviron come back and can it be used for TRT itself as a sole agent versus an add-on agent as we know it's used with other steroids, especially estrogenic steroids? Let's get into history of Proviron developed in 1934. One of the earliest steroids developed back in that heyday of organic development of steroids. It was developed for androgen deficiency and hormonal deficiencies for men that, that have low T. Even back then, they knew that. And they, they knew that there's going to be something that this medicine itself can be tweaked to be better than testosterone or in addition to testosterone. And they weren't even working on anabolic steroids for the anabolic components. They started off thinking about really the recovery pieces and the androgenicity. It's really incredible when you go back and you tease out androgenicity versus anabolism, and then you move forward into the 1940s, 50s, and 60s into that absolute heyday of developing so many steroids that we know that we have even today. And you don't see any really new compounds being made. Of course, there's tailored compounds and special mixed compounds, but this is absolutely the beginning of the heyday of the true development scientifically, pharmaceutically for anabolic androgenic steroids. Let's talk about the mechanisms for review and definitely check out the Proviron Wingman video you'll see that I made several years ago. That's really cool, more in depth on the mechanisms and the chemistry of Proviron. We know that it stimulates the androgen receptors in the central nervous system, there's no question, less than skeletal muscle. So it's not a very anabolic steroid itself. It's used more, as I conceived, as a wingman, as a secondary agent, but it really primarily was conceived to be used as a primary hormonal replacement, TRT agent for men with andropause or having low androgen states. Oh, I wish I can go back on a time capsule and really see what were the scientists thinking way back when. We know that the properties of this incredible chemistry in this agent are in part that it's not estrogenic and it even acts as an anti-estrogen. So stay with me on this thinking. That's with testosterone and other estrogenic compounds like testosterone, even super physiologic testosterone, and other steroid compounds that we know are estrogenic like anadrol and dianabol and so many other steroids. So we know that it has a minimal effect also on putting down and adversely affecting fertility. And if you look at the initial studies, it actually can increase LH and FSH and maintain, if not increase, spermatogenesis. That right there is incredible. And that's where the guy like Frank that's over there, that's a naughty guy that may wanna be on this drug has to consider, will it shut your testicles down? Is it like being on testosterone with either Clomid together, which is not recommended long-term, or like with HCG that I know I did a video on this recently. So, and what are the side effects with estrogenicity? Because 
taking testosterone with HCG, you're talking about you're going to add up estrogen side effects. So could this be a perfect drug, an agent to use by itself, not to mention as an add-on? Stay with me on this. And if you want to maintain your testicle size, not to mention itself, well, it looks like LH and FSH are maintained. But how long does it go on for? I need anecdotes. I need real scientific guys that have support. Where's the support? What happened? How long did they do it back in the 30s and the 40s and 50s? Why did it go out of favor for TRT? Political? Were there side effects? Let's get into it here. Because if you could use it and your brain is feeling good and your sexual and your brain and your wellness is back from what androgens endogenously do and you're not shut down from the testicle standpoint and it's sustainable, who cares if you're not winning Mr. Olympia contest? Men don't, real guys who just want TRT, they don't care about that. That's why I had to do this video because it was, Frank, you made me think and I told you I was gonna do it. This is what you get with the Anabolic Doc app. Number one, a digital history and physical exam. Number two, weekly Zoom meetings with me. Number three, discounted commercial labs. Number four, weekly member only uncensored videos. Number five, Anabolic Docs mailbag. You can't come to the meetings or you don't wanna to come to the meetings, you ask a question, I wanna to respond to your question by making a video, put it back up on the app and you get to see your own question. Lastly, diagnostic and management library that is easily searchable by keywords. So the next piece is in sustainability is the liver toxicity. So if you look at the chemistry in this thing, is this one methyl DHT. Usually that methyl group is a scary thing. It's 17 alpha alkylation. That's a scary thing. D ball and, and anadrol, super draw, and these really powerful drugs, they're just gonna devastate your liver. You just can't live on them. Everyone knows. No one's gonna argue that. Can you do it for four to six weeks? Can you ramp up? Can you take one here and there? Sure, guys do all the time. Even that hurts them. Be careful, gentlemen. But what are the long-term consequences on liver hepatic toxicities because this thing is minimally 17-alpha alkylated? Again, I need science, guys. I, I looked, I researched this all over. It's funny when I do research and I keep getting my own videos coming back. Boy, that's humbling. So I need help on this. Cardiovascular long-term. This is gonna be huge. In my first video, I did watch my own first video from two years ago to get ready for this video and see when I was thinking and see when I, what research I did, because I did a lot of research back then. Today was just kind of a review of everything, but I never thought that I'd see it being used modern day. To, this is March 1st of 2023, and here's a man in Europe who is gonna be using this, at least he's gonna try, for TRT. And I've heard it before, but I've never seen it. Is it making a comeback? It's time for me to grow the Anabolic Doc team. I'm looking for one of you guys. I'm looking for a social media promotion coordinator assistant to come on my team. So check out the description in the link for this very specific scope of exactly what I'm looking for and apply with it. So the cardiovascular long-term implications, you know me and the heart. You gotta be careful. What's it gonna do to the lipid panel? What's it doing to the endothelial, the hypertension? I, no one's gonna know, do, do we know? So, and, and again, is it sustainable? So, and, and what do you do? Are there other agents we can use to block and minimize those effects? Because you, you may have to, polypharmacy again. And the last part is, is it tolerated long term? Which means that you start the agent, it works, you feel great. I don't know what levels you're gonna check because it probably is gonna shut down your endogenous testosterone, but maybe with the LH and FSH effects, maybe it doesn't. It's gonna be really interesting to see what, what, how that's gonna be for this man that's gonna do it. He's kind of like a guinea pig for us. It's gonna be amazing to see this. So what's gonna happen in the end long-term to the CNS? Can you live on this thing for months and months and years and years just as a sole agent, 
I don't think so because you would see people doing it, but I know guys can go on and off it. And we know it could certainly even paradoxically shut guys down. And then what? Then they're on TRT. So that's the last part here. Is it a good add-on? If you see the add-on drugs, there's aromatase inhibitors. We don't like them. You could use them, but they're going to affect your lipids. They're going to affect the joints, the brain, the whole nine yards. Just for some gynecomastia relief, if you even have it or you don't have it, and just looking at those numbers on paper. But is this medication lightly used either on and off, kind of like a serum like raloxifene or tamoxifen, can it be used in, in periods of time to just soften down and to be used as an anti-estrogen with a, a low dose, hopefully, of TRT? And that's my question. Hope I covered all this stuff for you guys. This is kind of like a blip in time and just a thought breakdown for you guys. I want to make it very organized here. And now I need your comments because all men in the world need to understand from an educational, open, non-biased and non-manufactured and commercial uh, perspective of selling something to you. Of course, my Anabolic Doc app is there for you guys, but that's just, that's just good karma for you guys. So you can have a place to go to have access to me and all my information. And that's hopefully from good karma guys and you really trust me, I wanna keep you guys really strong and healthy forever. But I know androgens are big and I want you guys to understand the science and, of course, always the risks. So give us your comments so other men can learn. Thank you very much.